uh, thank you EOPA, as well as uh, President Biden, uh, members of Congress for this historic piece of legislation. Uh, my name is Vaughn Sharp, and I do serve as the president of the National Congress of American Indians, uh, the oldest and largest representative body of tribal nations in the United States, representing more than 574 uh, sovereign nations. You know, our ancestors uh, long foretold of a day of reckoning. Uh, many of our ancestors predicted there would come a time when the planet and the trajectory that we were on was not sustainable. And that day of reckoning has arrived. That day of reckoning is now. And I really want to touch on something that Alex said that while we face an apocalyptic challenge on a global scale, the solution to this challenge lies within us. And I would like to add not only the solution with respect to the, the, uh, the innovation, uh, all of the work that we've been doing for decades, but I would also urge those to look at what has been here for centuries, that old traditional ecological knowledge that our ancestors practiced through centuries. So when you look at what we possess here in the United States, we possess the full spectrum historical knowledge and wisdom in renewable energy and in innovation that's on the horizon. So collectively, we have centuries of knowledge right here at our fingertips. This generation has it. We have to be smart. We have to be strategic in taking the resources as well as the investments that we have to come together. No one is immune from climate change. We are all deeply impacted and everyone that's represented at this table as well as through the EOPA has it. And so I am just truly honored and, and deeply committed uh, to continue to stand with our, our relatives all across uh, this country. And I want to add, tribal nations have been significantly a uh, part of the, the global community. There are over 100 million indigenous peoples around the world. And the world recognizes that we are disproportionately impacted. And we are on the front lines. And we have little to no resources. And so it's going to be our goal and mission to attract foreign investment, foreign innovation, to partner with tribal nations, to attract investment that otherwise wouldn't even come to the United States. And so those are some of the things that we see with the opportunities here. And it, it's at that point in time when we have no choice, we have to declare a state of national emergency. We are running out of time and we have to deploy all of the resources, all of the states, all of the federal agencies, uh, toward one common goal and vision. We, we share that vision, but we have to be very specific and strategic, inclusive, and rise above all of the division, rise above all of the noise and static around climate change, and find leaders all across this country, whether you're an elected official, you're from the faith-based communities, you're from uh, uh, colleges and universities, academics, uh, youth. I, I want to touch on the youth activism. When, when you see what happened at Standing Rock with the Dakota Access Pipeline, that was our native youth rising. And we have to find ways because our generation clearly has a vision and we're making the plans, but ultimately it's gonna be that next generation that implements and executes much of the work that we are doing. So I encourage everyone to bring our youth along and they have a lot to say, they have a lot of passion and a lot of energy. And my final point that I wanna make is we have to hold the fossil fuel industry accountable. We are doing all of this work, all of this work to clean up decades of disaster, decades of environmental genocide, and they must be held accountable. We're gonna do the work going forward, but let's not forget what they've done in the past and hold them accountable with atmospheric litigation or other ways in which we can uh, sue them, secure the resources that are necessary, and, and make that investment. This should not fall all entirely on the public, whether it's paying for it, paying them subsidies, they must finally pay going forward. And, and that's what we are also committed to ensuring that uh, there's some environmental justice along the way. Thank you.